Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial in making your own vintage cabinet cards. Now this is a representation of what cabinet cards would look like. Um, they're from like Victorians or earlier periods um, and it's basically they were roughly about four and a quarter by six and a half inches in size and I assume they sat on your cabinet which is why they're called cabinet cards um, they are pretty much always um, portrait images and a vast majority of them have sort of plain backgrounds or the, you know, the, there are props involved and what have you so this is the effect we're going to try and go for now my first attempt was here with a picture of me and then I, my second attempt was this image here um, which I got from up Unsplash um, so this is what I'm going to be trying to recreate so I'm just going to quickly shut down these images and then I'll be back okay I have reset some things and now we're going to have to look on the internet for a frame to use now I found this is harder than I thought it would be um, but I did find this one by Nick of Time um, it is actually a sort of written tutorial in its own right but using a program I've never heard of called Pick Monkey um, but it's, it, we can use it in Affinity Photo and if you scroll down here we have a frame that we can use and you can just right click this and save picture as and it's probably best to save this in the PNG format so you will have an empty background the other thing we're going to need is a sort of texture again you can use whichever one you want to use I'm going to use this one by textures for Photoshop again I will add links to both of these sites in the description for this video as for backgrounds and textures you can get sort of ver three various main types which is like a PNG which will have no background with the scratches or you can get a white background with black scratches or white scratches on a black background depending on which one you have and you use it will depend on how you blend it into your picture now I'm going to go for this one which is obviously white scratches on a black background but like I said whichever one you select you will need to blend it accordingly so coming back to the frame which I have saved and now opened in Affinity Photo as you can see as a PNG you have no background now the only trouble with this is the actual frame is not straight and also the background is bigger than the frame so if I put an image behind the frame it will probably show up around the edges so to get around that I'm going to come to the crop tool and first of all I'm going to rotate it slightly to straighten it up so I'm going to come to this corner up here until the cursor changes to that double headed arrow click and hold and then just adjust this until I got it as straight as I think I can get which is about there and I'm then going to just bring in all the sides until they are touching the edge of this frame go about there I think and then this last side and then once you're happy just double click now the only thing here is is because this card had rounded corners we do still have a clear background area on the corners so to get around that I'm going to use the in painting brush tool which is this icon here and the hardness I've got set on 80% and opacity is 100% and I'm just going to paint over those corners just to make this a square frame 
and I don't have to worry about background over over spilling from the edges so this is our frame set now if you remember on the first part of this video a lot of those cabinet cards that I showed you it would have a company name down the bottom here or a logo or what have you so I'm going to just quickly add an imaginary company name so I'm going to select the text tool and the text I'm going to use is going to be bell flower because it's quite a nice sort of vintage type looking um, font now next I would want to pick the color but bizarrely I've found that because I want to add noise to the color it won't let me actually do that until I've actually selected an area that I want to start to put the font in so I'm just going to quickly draw out this cursor and then it will actually let me pick the color with noise so I'll come back to the color and I'm going to go for a area in the orangey red colors and I'm going to pick a sepia color about there and where it says opacity here you have a representation of the color that you've picked but if you click on that you will change to noise and I will want to add as much noise as possible to give me that vintage feel so I can now close that down and start typing my imaginary company name and then come to the move tool and just put this in a better position let's try that about there maybe increase the size slightly let's zoom in it's easier to move little bits when you've zoomed in right there you go and then I'm just going to lower the opacity slightly just some of that lighter background behind will show through so that's on about 89-90% press control and zero to zoom out so there we have our cabinet card frame and the logo so now what we want is for the image to go into this now like I said, I, think, like I said earlier, it's probably best for the portrait images, and the clean of the background is probably better. Now, if you're going to take pictures of yourself or your friends or what have you, you probably a good idea to sort of if you can get props and make it look sort of old, you know, old clothes and hats and what have you. Um, I'm going to pick a picture from Unsplash from the stock tab. And I've just typed in vintage mail, and there's one down here I want to try, which is this chap here with the waistcoat and the flat cap. I'm just going to click and drag this into my picture and come back to the layers tab. And what I will do is I will zoom out, come to the move tool, and as you can see, this picture is much bigger than the frame, and because I've got snapping on if I move this around until I get the red line which gives me the horizontal center and the green line which will give me the vertical center I know now that that image is centered and if I come to the one of the corners hold down the control key and I'm guessing it's command on a Mac hold down that key and then click and drag this in I know it will reduce in size from the center point so let's get to about there and then press control and zero to bring this back to size now i'm going to tinker a little bit with the size and position in a minute but the first thing i need to do is to bring this layer down and behind the frame so i'm going to just click on the icon bring it down until you get this blue line that goes all the way across so that is now behind the frame 
so I can reposition the image how I want and maybe do a little bit more resizing because I've now got a bit of extra room to work with. Let's try that about there. Right, quite happy with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I've highlighted this layer here, but I'm going to add a pixel layer. And I want this pixel layer to be at the bottom. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to click and drag this down until it's behind the portrait image. And I'm going to flood fill this with a color. So I'll come on the flood fill tool. And let me just double click in here. And the color I'm going to use is C eight A E six E and at the moment we have some noise in there which I don't want. Um, but let me just turn this off these layers off for a second so we can just see the background layer there and I'll click on that and flood fill that and I can lose that noise just by clicking on that there and dropping this down to zero and then flood fill that again so I'm now filling that with that color but with no noise so I can bring these all back because this is going to be the color that sort of comes from behind the image so highlighting the portrait layer um, we're going to change this to black and white um, if you started with a black and white image you can skip this bit but what I'm going to do is add a black and white adjustment to this so I'm going to click on this half black and white icon here and select black and white now you could leave the settings as they are or you can tinker with them um, I think it's only really going to be the skin colors and what have you so it's got to be red and yellow mainly for this particular image and before I shut this down I want this to be affecting sort of just this layer so I'm going to click and drag this down until I get the blue line that comes up to the edge of the icon not going all the way across I'll click and drag this down so you get that blue line like that so that is now only affecting this layer and while I've got this open I'm going to change the blend mode now overlay oh no sorry not this let me shut this down I've got that wrong what I need to be on is the actual layer of the image and I'm going to change the blend mode of this to either overlay soft light hard light they're probably the best three depending on the sort of look that you're going for obviously there are others that you could try but I think possibly soft lights too that's probably yeah hard light is probably the best for this particular image in my opinion and I can always come back to the black and white adjustment and sort of tinker a little bit more and get an, a look that I like. Let's try. Doesn't seem to be any blue in there. All right. And you could also come back to your image layer, make sure that is highlighted and you know lower the opacity if you want to make it a bit more faded. Um, I'm going to go for about just over 90 percent. So I'm fairly happy with that and the background color layer that we have there is sort of helping to come through because of the change of blend mode. So let me just 
come off that. Right. Now a lot of these cabinet cards, if you remember we looked at them at the beginning, have a sort of vignetted effect. I think partly or mainly due to how the photographs were taken in the day and also because of you know how they've faded over the years. So what we're going to do is if we highlight the actual image layer we're going to add a layer mask which is this icon here that looks like a Japanese flag and that mask will be added to this layer um, this is the white mask at the moment which allows everything to be seen but we want to make it a black mask so it will hide everything so you can either do that from I think it is layer menu come to invert or you can just press Control and I and I'm guessing Command and I on a Mac. So because that is now a black layer mask it is hiding the whole of that image. So we need to come to the brush tool and you want about 20% opacity, zero hardness and a fairly biggish brush. I don't know what size this is. This is 852 pixels and we need white as our color um, I've got a keyboard shortcut to make mine back to black and white but you can if you haven't got that you just have to change this back to white and as you can see we're not actually done anything yet but as you can see we are bringing you can bring back the image here so I'm going to click a few times especially the face is the area where you obviously want it to be the sharpest but try and leave especially the corners sort of faded yeah I'm quite happy with that so there we have our sort of vintage cabinet card look and if you're happy with that result you could save it now, export it, and that would be the end of that. But I'm just going to add the texture for the scratches and what have you. So again, I'm going to highlight the portrait layer and come to this texture that I've selected. And I'm going to right-click that, copy it, come back to my image here and then come to the edit menu and paste now because it is still under the frame it is not being affecting the frame it is only affecting the images below uh, the layers below I should say and this is where you can change the blend modes and for a black background you need to select the screen blend mode if you've picked a texture that has a white background and black scratches you would have to use the multiply blend mode so I'm going to change that to screen I can also resize reposition to get more or less I mean obviously if I, let me zoom out a second if I make this bigger you're going to distribute the scratches further apart and if you shrink it down in size you're going to bring them closer together it's probably a bit excessive in places let's try that there and then I'm just going to lower the opacity just so that they're not so obvious it's just giving you that sort of weathered look this is what's this on about 25 percent and hopefully you can just see there is some sort of effect it's having on the image so let me control and zero that so again at this point you could save this and that would be the end of it um but we're going to go sort of one step further and add a bit of again a little bit of aging to the image so again i'm going to select the layer that is the portrait and to this we're going to add 
another adjustment which is a gradient map so I'm going to just click on adjustments and um, 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 I can never find it where is it oh, gradient map is further down down here now when you open a gradient map by default it will come set as three colors red green and blue so if I click on the middle one which it is currently set on anyway you could always just click on delete or you can just click and drag it downwards and it will remove it so we are back to two colors and what I want is sort of a dark red on the right uh, the right and a darker violet purpley color on the left as we're already on the blue color which is this node over here I'm going to click in the color area here and for this I'm going to use hex code so let's come to the hex slider and the color for this is 3 F zero five six four press return excuse me this a dark purpley color click on the node on the other side click on the color area there and the color I'm going to put in here is five D zero five zero five Turn. So they're, they're not that far off. One's like a red version of, and the other one's a purple version of pretty much similar colours. Um, you can pick whichever colours you prefer and like, but this is what I'm going to go for. And from here, I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light, which is just going to give you that sort of, again, more vintage sepia feel and I can lower the opacity of that to as much as you prefer for your particular image this one I'm going to go with yeah I think that looks quite good so that's 62 percent it will vary on your image from you know what's in your background and what have you so let me close that down so basically that is the end of the tutorial you can save export your image under a new name i hope this has been helpful to somebody out there who wants to try and do this sort of image so thank you for watching and goodbye